welcome to the United States and World Commerce, Henry Mondo. So please join me in welcome. Uh, well, thank you all for hosting me. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I know how it is to be Mayor. You're a busy guy. The fact that you made time to be here, I appreciate. And thank you for hosting me, and thank you to the students who are here. I was just saying that what you have going on here at Austin Community College is, um, this is exactly what America needs. This is exactly what America needs. Uh, and as you know, or I, I think you may know, yesterday the Commerce Department put out the application, $39 billion, for semiconductor companies mm -hmm. to encourage them to do more manufacturing in the United States, which is unbelievable because, as you know, we've become utterly reliant upon Asia, mostly Taiwan, 90, by 92% of our leading edge chips from Taiwan. And that's a vulnerability. So we think it's time to make more of that in America. But the truth of it is, we need to work with everyone in this room in order to hit our mission. And we need to train a lot more people. Uh, and I know you guys from industry, I want to hear from you today. But when I talk to people at TSMC, Samsung, TI, NXP, et cetera, they say, we need the talent. We need 100,000 more semiconductor technicians. We need, you know, to triple the number of engineers that this country produces, and on and on and on. So right here, what I've seen today is so exhilarating. It really is that public-private partnership that it's going to take to get this done and to meet the mission. Uh, so I just, uh, with your help, we're going to create a, a self-sustaining, highly productive, uh, entire ecosystem of semiconductor manufacturing from materials, chemicals, wafers, supply chain, the fabs, packaging, the whole thing in America, and the research and development. And educational partners, um, community colleges, University of Texas, etc., all matter and all make a difference. So uh, I just can't thank you enough for what you do. Over to me, or did you want to say your Okay, so uh, Guadalupe, yes. first question for you, my friend. Maybe you can introduce yourself um, sure. to everybody. Okay. My name is Guadalupe Lozano. Uh, I was born in South Texas. I grew up in Central Texas. And uh, I passed from job to job, mostly construction. Um, I was in the Army for a little bit. And then after a long way discharge, I went in and started coming here to ACC. Uh, I have an associate in science, general science, and I'm working on my applied associates for advanced manufacturing and a uh, bachelor's mm -hmm. course for uh, advanced technology. Mm -hmm. well, how did you, what made you get interested in advanced manufacturing and how do we get more people like you to know about it and get into this path? Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Uh, I think one of the most important things to get people interested in advanced manufacturing is uh, giving, it, giving them a good understanding of what the STEM is all about, about science, technology, engineering. I mean, I've always been curious, so uh, I think the best thing to do to satisfy those curiosities is go to schools, uh, give lectures, have uh, visitors from the advanced manufacturing team go over there and show them, and also give them tours, like set up a a collaboration with all the nearby schools to bring them here and show them all these awesome engineers. Like that would be a great step to to get in in the door at least. Yeah. It's interesting. It is true. Even when I came in here and I saw this, I've, I've been in a lot of manufacturing facilities. This is the real deal. <laughs> right? This is what it looks like, and it's exciting to think, you know can I do that? Yes. So yeah, Samsung and Tesla and Applied Materials they have all been great contributors to our programs. And the programs we have here, like I myself got a Samsung scholarship, so mm -hmm. that was that was really good. I had to pay very very little out of pocket for my tuition. John's looking at you. He's gonna hire you at the end of this. But <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what about you, Chancellor? I mean, what from your perspective, 
When you think about the role of this community college in training the workforce that this country needs in order for us to compete, you know, that's what I think about every day. How does America lead the world and compete? Compete with China, compete with the world, talent, we need talent. What are you doing here that is working and that you want to continue to do um, to make sure you pump out the talent that manufacturers can hire? Well, let me start and say we have a mantra that says innovation plus collaboration equals transformation. And so collective impact. So the people that you see around this table, and you know, it starts with our board of trustees uh, for ACC, and that is taking a look at the vision and the support necessary to actually support innovation and collaboration. But then you go beyond that and you take a look at our partnership with the city of Boston, with uh, the county, and uh, we've got Andy Brown back here. Uh, so, you know, so their support in making the linkages, the Chamber of Commerce and Opportunity Austin, making sure that we have the linkages with them, that when new companies are looking at Austin, that we can provide all of the materials and all of the support necessary to attract them here. But next is partnerships with K-12, because we've got to get students interested at younger ages in what advanced manufacturing means and what it looks like, because it's not the conveyor belt you really think about. This is high-tech, high-tech industry. And so we have an early college high school, it's called a tech but it's yes. like an early college yes. high school, yeah. specifically for uh, high school students to get here and be trained, uh, and also linked up with community industry partners so that they can provide the mentorship necessary, they can provide the paid internships in the junior and senior years, and they get hands-on experience through our lab here with the best faculty and staff that you'll find anywhere in the <laughs> galaxy. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Uh, but it, that's what it takes. And then, you know, we've got Pharma here, so Ed Latson, who uh, represents Austin Regional Manufacturing Association. And the team that he brings around, they, they are critical in giving us the right input to give the right skill sets necessary. So they're working with us to say, this is how your curriculum needs to be. Uh, and then you just heard that Guadalupe had a, a paid, is going to have a paid internship and already had a scholarship. So career scholars, it's important that students have the opportunity um, and the resources necessary to be successful. And so I say it's collective impact, and I would also say, uh, Madam Secretary, that you will not find a better place in the world than Austin, Texas, and Central Texas, where collaboration truly exists uh, at a, a detailed level. Yes. Well, I believe you. I do believe you. Uh, because, uh, you know, Samsung, Apple, Google, Big here and getting bigger. There's a reason for that. Texas Instruments, Infineon, NXP, Applied. These companies don't just come here because the mayor's a good guy. Plays a role. That is what you just said. The talent, the ecosystem, the collaboration. Um, I want to hear from the businesses. Um, but just wanted to give you, I, I, I know you might have to scoot in there. I just wanted to give you a chance uh, to talk about some of the work you're doing in order to enable all these pieces to come together because you play a unique role uh, with, you know, K through 12, with the community college, with the Chamber of Commerce, kind of the person to bring it all together. Well, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do that. Uh, of course, this, you have around this table the, the folks that, make it happen mm -hmm. and are the players in it. The collaboration that the Chancellor speaks about would be one of the first and foremost things I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but a key part of that is workforce. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're sitting in a, in a facility that focuses on that, says uh, we're going to be nimble, we will change based upon what the needs of, needs of the manufacturers are. And the manufacturers have been very good about coming to us and saying, uh, here are the jobs that we need to fill. Here, here's the difficulty. And what I think you will see going forward is that our economic development paradigm it won't be like a lot of places where they just, uh, at the end of each year, we say, wow, we created X number of jobs, and now we move to the next year and start counting the W-2s over again. Mm -hmm. 
it will be not only the W-2s that are being created, but how many people do we actually get from Austin and Central Texas into those jobs? So working with high schools, uh, so in working with trade unions, working with uh, uh, ACC, uh, Workforce Solutions, which is uh, our Workforce Development Board here in Austin, working with all of them so that we're meeting the needs. And, and what happens at the end of the year is we're able to say, look at all the people we actually put into these jobs. That's our measure of success, as opposed to just the fact that we are, you know, we are the, you know, the place that a lot of people want to create jobs. I think that's important. And I also think, and I've heard from so many companies, that the, their employees who come through a P-TECH program, a community college, something like this, are among their most loyal. So, uh, you know, like that, if you come to ACC, you, right, exactly. If you come here, if you get trained in a place like this, maybe if you're sponsored by a local company, you go straight from here, you work in that company, you're probably going to be there 20, 30 years. And I, I hear that from employers. So they're well trained and they stick around. Uh, speaking of employers, I want to turn over to Samsung and apply. Samsung's got a big presence here. And, uh, you know, with the Chips Act, we hope you get bigger and bigger because <laughs> you're, you know, best in the world at what you do. Um, so tell us a little bit about the work you're doing here in the community college. And also, as we go forward, you know, as we invest the $40 billion to expand the industry, what do we have to do more of to meet your needs so you want to continue to expand? We'll we start with John and then go to David. Yeah, sure. You know, first of all, thank you very much for uh, yourself and the administration for advancing the, the CHIPS Act legislation. That's, it's uh, very impactful. Uh, you know, I know you uh, Samsung doubling down. We did start our construction and our work prior to CHIPS Act starting. Uh, we had full confidence, uh, you and, and the administration, and glad to see them come through. And happening so quickly, just even with the NOFO coming out just a few days ago. So we're very excited uh, and look forward to working on our application with you. Uh, you know, Samsung is a company we've, we've always thought that uh, bringing, uh, manu increasing our manufacturing here in Texas, or you know, first in the United States, but thankfully here in Central uh, Central Texas, uh, would be the best way for us to support the United States semiconductor interests and, and you know, strategic objectives. So we're very happy to be able to participate in that way. Uh, you know, a year ago or so, uh, when many senators and, and congressmen were Thinking about the Chips Act, uh, they were doing a lot of tours of our Austin uh, site just to understand what is a semiconductor manufacturing site. And we definitely have a, a great site in Austin, well represented of what advanced manufacturing looks like. Uh, so there's a lot of discussion about chips, and then it got on to John. You know, what happens next? We get chips done. What is it? As you, as you said, uh, uh, it would solve our workforce. And Workforce is going to be the biggest thing. So if we build it, you know, we have to be able to have folks still working there. Uh, you know, so we, we look at you know, this Chips Act really being able to help us, uh, you know, help the, the city of Taylor, of course, uh, help us build partnerships and help us create jobs. Uh, but to you know, your to your main question about what are we doing? Uh, a lot of the work we're doing is those partnerships, which are key, some that were already mentioned, partnering with the colleague, uh, with our industry here now, to be able to uh, create the training and the curriculum, uh, to be able to have folks ready to come work uh, at Samsung and in other industries. So working with uh, Ed Lawson, Arba, with the Intel, Apply, uh, NXP, uh, it's not adversarial. We all understand the position that we're in at the moment. And there's certainly a, a need that we have now, but you have to be very forward-looking. You know, as, as you know, we've talked to and we've talked to our, our CEO about. You know, we've got one. We're talking about one fab there, two fab, one building. But we have we have room for ten fabs on the Taylor site. We have room for two more factories uh, on the Austin site. And so we have to really be looking forward, and not just what I need this year. And so getting the K through 12. You know, at Samsung, we've already looked at uh, trying to go to 50 uh, school districts this year to do just exactly what was mentioned. We have to go talk about. High school? Yes. We have to go talk about 
uh, what is semiconductor manufacturing? I'll date myself a little bit. 1990 graduated uh, University of New Hampshire, a uh, chemistry degree, went into uh, semiconductors. And then 37% uh, when I graduated of the manufacturing of semiconductors was done domestically. And now it's 12%. So not only did we lose, which you're well aware of, not only did we lose the manufacturing in the country, but with that is people's understanding about semiconductors, the importance of semiconductors, whether you're talking about our everyday life, the supply chain, whether you're talking about uh, uh, national defense, national security, and how they're built into everything that we do. So we really have to get to a point where we're working at all levels uh, of uh, students and, and start talking about semiconductors, their use, and that there's great careers to be had in that. Internships, scholarships, uh, we're actually, uh, we've got something we're planning with Fort Hood, so we, we are a uh, We Hire Vets designated uh, company, and we hope to be uh, a higher vets with the Labor Department uh, later this year, we designated that. Uh, but we're, we're starting an internship uh, program working with the Fort Hood, where they will send uh, soldiers who are within about six months of actually getting out. They'll come to Samsung and work uh, and learn and get trained. Uh, and that game will interview them for a job. It's a great program. There's no downside. It's perfect for them coming out. It's great for us because we need people. But that's just one example of programs that we have to be looking at and investing in. Uh, and the key word is uh, collectively. Collectively, and that's uh, the one thing I'm really happy about, at least in, in Central Texas. And, and, and as the mayor said, everybody here at the table is really working together to help find solutions for today and feed that pipeline for the future. And that's the key point. Um, let me say this: I want to hear from David. But as we invest the money and, uh, and work with you on your application and other companies' applications. One of the criteria, because we, you know, we'll have more demand for the money than supply, obviously. So, but as we decide um, who's going to get how much money, we're going to be looking at the regional partnerships around workforce because we want. Look, I have to take taxpayer money. We can only invest in projects that will be successful, which means you have to build the facility on time, on budget which means you need the labor that's skilled to build. These facilities are massive. I visited the Samsung facility in Seoul. Yeah. It's the size of like three football fields. Right. Uh, it takes thousands of people to build it. And then of course you need people to work there. Mm -hmm. And so as we evaluate applications, we're gonna look and see, do you have the local partnerships with the state, with the city, with K through 12, with the community college, so that we have confidence to know you're going to be able to, you know, meet the mission and hire the people you need to meet. Mm -hmm. So that's going to really put you in a good position. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to add on to uh, what was mentioned. Um, when we talk to our younger generation and we talk about chips, no one knows what we're talking about. We talk about <laughs> like Frito Lay, right? Uh -huh. Frito -Lay, what the chip is. We talk about semiconductor. They say, "What is semiconductor?" And so I think it's important that we have to educate uh, those K through 12 on mm -hmm. exactly what semiconductor is, what are chips. Anything you buy today has a chip in it. Your doorbell has a chip in it, right? And that doorbell will be upgraded. And when it's upgraded, they need more chips. And no one wants the old technology, everybody, even the robots, now I7, right? So the vacuum robot, right? So bought one of my wife one of those the other day. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so uh, she wanted it. But anyway, so um, at Applied Materials, we have more than nearly doubled our manufacturing capacity. Uh, three, four years ago, we're about 4,000 people on campus. We're close to 7,000 people on campus today. So we've added over 40% clean room space on the facility. On that facility, we recently just added another 730,000 square foot warehouse. I wanted to be Tesla's one million dollars. <laughs> enough, uh, enough, uh, land. But anyway, 730,000 square foot warehouse. That warehouse has a lot of automation in it, or chips. So we're going to continue to automate. So coupled with all that capacity expansion to support my customers, Samsung, uh, we also have to have labor. So we knew there was a labor shortage 
in this Austin area. So we partnered with ACC. ACC actually comes on campus and teaches our employees, and they actually get credited college hours on our campus that fund into the pot materials. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we call it the upskilling program. Hundreds of employees go through this, they actually get a certificate, and it's, they walk away with higher skill set than what they enter the workforce. You guys, that is the gold standard. I've been to a lot of places. That is an unusual program that they would come to you mm -hmm. and work that collaboratively. That's impressive. We partner with the high schools. Just yesterday, I had 20 high school children, they children, seniors, um, on campus, and I introduced myself. I was talking to them about shifts and semiconductor. Those high school kids come do an apprenticeship on our campus as well, Great. and they work before they enter the college curriculum. Our apprenticeship was recognized by Texas as one of the registered programs, so they can also get college hours uh, as well as they work on our campus. Couple of that, we work with the military, the Green Hand military folks on campus uh, as well. So there's a lot of work between the local colleges, the high schools, and what we call the upskilling program to bring that talent up. Uh, if they don't have skills, how do you teach them the skills? How do you bring the, the education to the campus to make it easier for the employees? How do we educate and bring in our college, our high school uh, children? Some of those kids went to college, and about half of them work at applied materials afterwards. So it's pretty good programs that we have. Now how do we continue to grow that beyond what we're doing today outside of just the Austin area, but beyond the entire United States basically. It's great. It's really great. By the way, I thought people didn't know what chips were either. And when I became the Commerce Secretary, of course I started working, the president asked me to really focus on chips, and that was during COVID. And Somehow all my friends knew that I, because I was responsible for chips, I was the reason that they, they couldn't buy a car. <laughs> or they bought a car, but they were only given one key fob, not two, because of lack of chips. Uh, you know, everyone seemed to know what a chip was, right? Couldn't get the dishwasher. This is a, it's for chips. This is a crazy thing. Last year, Ford Motor Company, people at Ford Motor Company, workers, who work in Ford's Indiana and I think Michigan facilities only work a full week three times the entire year because of lack of chips. For example, windshield wipers. Windshield wipers don't work these days without chips. They didn't have enough, they couldn't put the windshield wipers together. I mean, just think about that. Only full week three times a year they, they were furloughed just because of lack of chips. And that's just cars. So this is. Um, you know, you're exactly right. When you get out of college, when I get out of college, 37% remain in America, now we're 12%, 0% of leading edge in America. So we got our work cut out for us. But of course, you can't make the chips unless you have the supply chain. So, and we are out to build or deepen the whole supply chain. Uh, not just the fabs, you know, fabs, packaging, testing, but we want the upstream supply chain too in America enough of it and that's very important and i know that's the area that you all are in uh the, the money we're going to put out yesterday is for the fabs then in about may we're going to be putting out the money for supply chain companies because we know about that. so uh maybe we could start with you and you could tell us a little bit about your company and how it all fits in so we compete against the OEMs for parts of fabs. We need to run their weight for production of it, and that they consume in the process of making the actual wafer. We've been doing that here in Leander, Texas for 40 years. Um, we make the parts, we make the assemblies, we offer some refurbishments, do reworks, repairs, and customizations. Customizations primarily centered along that. Working with the engineers to improve the way that their process line works, where they fits together better and it's more efficiently, and they can. You know, Pokeo, you put it together and it goes together right the first time. We work with engineers to do that and have built our own product line along this line. So we put TI and we don't do a lot of work with Samsung, unfortunately. We don't think we get in, but a lot of work with us. We can work on that. I've worked with NXP over the years. We worked with Motorola and we worked with Freescale. We did a lot of innovation with Freescale. 
um, we're a small business. We've struggled through a lot of recessions and downturns in those 40 years. But I think, you know, recessions, downturns, ice storms, COVID, you know, all those things. But the period of time I found most discouraging was when everything was being outsourced. You know? mm -hmm. Everything was going overseas. And you could see it happening. Mm -hmm. And our livelihood was just bleeding away from us. And we were being told, you gotta be cheaper, you gotta be cheaper, you gotta be cheaper. And there was no way to do that without seriously compromising the quality of your products. There was no way to do that. And you could see that that didn't turn into good things at the end of the day, right? There was no way that wasn't just a race to the bottom for everybody. At least that's how we felt about it. You know, we're letting our machinists go and we're putting people on part-time work and they're going away. You can watch them choosing other professions actively. And I believe that created a generational gap for us because I can hire really old machinists and I can hire really green machinists, but everything in between is kind of dirty for us right now. We do a lot of internal training. I hire young people and I partner them up with my older machinists and try to mentor them. We try to get involved with programs like they're offering here at ACC because I think it's very important that these folks understand what's required to do their job. I can hire an operator who doesn't know anything, who has no math and geometry skills, and it's not going to be very good for someone. He's just not. You don't have to know what to push the button, but it helps you to know what you're doing, right? You need to know what you're doing, what you're listening for, what you're looking for in order to do a good job, even if you're an operator. So we're doing that internally at a fair, fairly large cost to us. Our scrap rate's high because I've got a lot of young people who are messing up a lot, but it's just something, that's just something I have to eat them because there aren't a whole lot of alternatives to that. I have to grow my own. So I'm really excited about this kind of thing, about everybody coming together and solving this problem collectively because if the, and I think the most important point is that semiconductor is an industry of the future. You know, it supports knowledge and progress. We can't solve climate change, explore space, or even drill for oil and gas effectively without ships, right? There's nothing we can do in our future that doesn't involve ships. And that's not just security for, you know, defense. And that's community. That's about your community, right? Those are jobs for your community and the people that are working in your community. And it spreads all the way down, right, to people that are supporting these fabs, people like me, right? And all the people that work for them. And we're active in our community and we're supporting our community, and that all comes, that all lifts up from the bottom, right? So I'm excited about it for that reason here at the bottom of the food chain, as you might say. We're just, I'm making parts, I'm making good parts, but we're making parts, we've been doing it for a long time, so I'm excited to see it coming back here. That's really great. How many people work in the company? 48. Perfect. By the way, what you said is so right, and people don't get it, which is when we went from 37%, made 37% of world semiconductors in America, now 12%, you lose that whole talent base. Machinists. You, know, you just lose the whole people who made it. I gave you. That's exactly right. And, and, like, I was giving an interview the other day, and I said, you know, just, uh, there used to be about 300,000 people who worked in America in manufacturing in semiconductors. Now there's about 170,000. At the same time, the industry's tripled, you know, around the world. By every statistic, we've just atrophied. And all the talent and the skills has atrophied. And somebody said to me, well, how did this happen? Essentially, how did we let this happen to ourselves? How is it that uh, we buy 92% of our leading edge chips from Taiwan? Chips that are used in every piece of United States military equipment, by the way. And I said, it's true. And I said, we took our eye off the ball in manufacturing. Venture capital. 2% of venture capital in America goes into hardware. It all goes into software. Everyone you know, all the young people today, they want to be coders, do algorithms, computer coders, software. That's all fine, that's great. America leads the world actually in semiconductor software and in semiconductor design. But we get out of the business of as a country of making this. And we're gonna get back into that business. And as we grow, this whole thing goes together in a happy ecosystem. Just being proud of it, right? It yes. does stigmatize it. Nobody was telling you you should go do this every day. Not over there. Yeah, and there were a lot of booms and busts that just drove that home. You know, great, or you were stuck. 
Well, this is a boom, and we got to work together. John? I have a company called Athena Manufacturing. We're very fortunate to be a supplier for applied materials. So what's good for Samsung is good for applied and is really good for us. Uh, we have we started the business. I'm, I'm in business with my oldest friend. He, he and I have been friends for 60 years. And uh, we've been in business together since 1995. I uh, have two sons that are also in the business. I have a daughter that I'm trying to get to come in the business, but she's in Austin, Texas, and wants to be in the music business. So, uh, so but I'm trying. And uh, so we have 217 people uh, run seven days a week. Uh, we've had a really tough time finding talented people to run these mills and lathes and lasers and mm -hmm. and ACC has been knocked it out of the park for us. Yes. <laughs> what, four or five years ago we were upstairs in a in a conference room and we were talking about putting in a, a machine shop and a training center. And, I, this is my <laughs> and this is the finest facility I've ever seen. Well, they've got these wonderful equipment, and the problem is we can't get anybody to come learn how to do this. We're, we're having a big struggle with getting people in the door. And so, uh, so two successes that Athena has had uh, recently is, is three years ago we started sponsoring the Elgin High School Welding Program. And ACC provides the training. It's a P-TECH program. I think mean, this is afternoon wrong, but but they had eight kids in their first class at Elgin High School, and all eight of them interned at Athena Manufacturing last summer. No, excuse me, the the spring of their senior year, and we offered all eight of them jobs. Mm -hmm. And seven of them accepted, and seven of them were still there. You know, and it's been so, uh, We have 12 in the Elgin program this year, and 12 of them were at our shop today, Tuesday, Thursdays, all the spring semester of their senior years. They'll all get job offers in May, and hopefully they'll all come to work for us. Mm -hmm. So that's been a huge success. Thank you, ACC, and thank you, Melvin High School. That has really been a, a lifesaver for us because we couldn't find welders. You know, it's it's very difficult to find them. And so we piggyback on top of that with the internship program that that ACC has just started. Laura put that together and. Uh, Started in January, there are eight people in the program. There ought to be 80, <laughs> but there are eight. Five of them work at Athena Manufacturing, so you know we, we're trying to load the, the program up and, and teach these people up so we have qualified people to run our equipment. So it's really been an awesome partnership with ACC and with Elgin and, you know, I agree with these guys. We got to get the kids on buses and and bring them to our shops so they see what we do. It's not some dark place with the hammer where you beat on something all day. It's you know millions of dollars worth of equipment and, and it's it's a challenging work and you build something, you make something at the end of the day that uh, it's, it's just a, a great great industry to be in and, and the kids have no clue <laughs> what what it is, you know, and, and they don't know what a chip is, they don't know what a lathe is, they don't know what a mill is, they don't know, you know, and, and it's it's unfortunate. And there's just so many opportunities out there, like Guadalupe, you know, he's, he's coming on, but there's so much more that we need to get the uh, young people involved. And, and I was at an ACC, the, the awards banquet for ARMA last week. Uh, I met the, the 
teacher of East, Northeast, Northeast High School. I got an email today. He's coming with a whole busload of kids <laughs> on March the 16th. You know, so I mean, it's really we got to get the word out, and we can do it and be successful. No, I love it. But you know, and this is why this is such an exciting place. If if you have all parts of the supply chain, I mean, there's something to be said for a cluster. You know, and that's what we're trying to do in investing the chips money create a few big clusters in certain communities in America. So you have the high schools, the community college, the big research universities, the suppliers, the big company, you know, all together so that everyone who goes to the local high school knows someone who works in the semiconductor manufacturing industry. And they think about it as a place to go. And uh, I'll never forget when I was governor, I, I tried hard uh, back in Rhode Island to get people into manufacturing. I grew up in a manufacturing family, so I love it. And my dad would always say there's something special about making a living making things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was looking, look, I, was, uh, I thought of it when you said trigonometry. I was at a class that we set up around trigonometry for manufacturing. And I was talking to a guy, immigrant, who was a dishwasher, hated his job, didn't make a lot of money, smart guy, and he went through his trigonometry. He said, wow, you're really good at math. He said, actually, I failed math in high school, uh, but I love it now because I understand why it matters. Yeah. The trigonometry for manufacturing, the guy loved it. He was good at it, it made sense, it was relevant. He was applying the trigonometry to manufacturing things, and he was going to go get a job. But when these kids are just learning math for no purpose, it turned out. So it's just like all connected. All connected. Uh, I know you had a few questions and such. Well, I, I, I want to, first of all, thank you. I didn't thank you a minute ago for being here and for uh, what you're doing, but I, I wanted to focus just a second on uh, Ed and Kerry who represent, in, in, in Ed's case, with the, the Regional Manufacturing Association and, and carries the interim uh, CEO and president of the Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce. But we've talked a lot about how this impacts us and what we might need to create the, the clusters that she's, she's talking about. But talk with the, with, uh, the Biden SHIP program and uh, the impact that that can have on us. Talk about it from specifically from your manufacturers association point of view, and then I'd like to hear the, the talk about the chamber. Yeah, Mayor, I think that's a, a great question to ask, and I appreciate it. I, I wanted to start by thanking the Secretary for visiting Austin. It's a, it's a real honor to have you here. And I am, I am so excited about our semiconductor cluster, and uh, the people around this table really kind of exemplify it. I mean, we, we have the premier fabs, we have the tool makers, we have this dynamic supplier community. And uh, as you can see, there really is a spirit of collaboration here. And we're all pulling together to try to make this the best semiconductor environment, I think, in the world. I think we can really do that here. Um, you know, when you talk to these companies, workforce is number one, Mayor, you know, that is a challenge. And specifically, what I hear is really technician and frontline. You know, that's where they're the most scared. And uh, there's been no better partner at the table than Austin Community College in addressing that. Um, you know, when, when I think about what's up ahead of us, I am, uh, have a lot of confidence that we can meet this challenge because we've successfully piloted a couple of different programs. Um, the first is uh, a manufacturing academy that trains high school juniors and seniors in skills needed within industry. And um, it was vetted by these companies here. And they, they leave high school with a one-year certificate. And the companies will hire them out of that program to be at a technician level and pay for them to complete their associates. Uh, you know, and, and it's a great program for young people. Uh, we need to get that to capacity. I think we have a, a, over 40 students in it right now. It needs to be about 80. And then as some of these uh, investments come online, I think we can scale to two or 300 people. Um, I'm very optimistic about what we can do there. Uh, the second thing is we have a rapid training program that takes unskilled and underskilled people and puts them through 160-hour training. Uh, they learn the basics and process, quality, safety, and maintenance. 
And our biggest employers out of that has been our semiconductors. You know, they've hired over 50% of the people coming out of this, these classes. And uh, there's a lot of other manufacturers besides semiconductors here fighting for them. You know, but uh, so we've trained over 300 people in, in the past two years. So, Mayor, I think, you know, as a community, we need to rise to the challenge and help scale these programs. And uh, specifically with semiconductor, it can be very expensive. You know, if you have a well-resourced lab with semiconductor tools, you know, it needs governmental support to make those kinds of things happen. And I think in my mind, if we're going to be the best semiconductor uh, ecosystem in the United States, we need resources like that here. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And uh, I really appreciate you paying attention to what's happening here and, and your, um, you know, actions to support chips. I, I'm very excited about the future. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Secretary Armando, for coming here today. We, you know, we believe that Austin truly has become one of the most dynamic semiconductor uh, ecosystems in the country. In fact, I might even call it a cluster. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for that terminology. I appreciate that. Um, and it's become such a huge economic impact. I mean, it, it's responsible for nearly three billion dollars in annual payroll in the area and over fourteen thousand jobs. Um, and this is a result Chip. of semiconductor, semiconductor chips, yes. Um, and 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 it's because of programs that Ed Latson and Arma has have worked together uh, to put together, um, and it's and it's a very super collaborative community. And we think it is now indeed the time to tell this story, to go out and market the fact that you know we are really building this region for semiconductors. The Texas Workforce Commission and the Governor's Office are aligned to work together to provide the workforce for this industry. Um, and I would be remiss if I did not also say thank you to ACC for the size of, of the university that it is, the fact that it can be as nimble and responsive as it is to what our manufacturers need is remarkable. Right now, 60% of what we call our hot leads um, at our economic development uh, organization, Opportunity Austin, they are for manufacturing. It used to be for office space and other things, but now it's manufacturing. And um, and we know that this is going to be a huge part of our region's growth going forward. And because of these strong partnerships and the investment that we see coming into Austin year after year, uh, the companies and the communities are coming together. We have confidence that we can indeed uh, be have the semiconductor workforce that is necessary to, uh, to make it, you know, truly the, the biggest semiconductor region in the country. So thank you for being here. Yeah, well, I want to say uh, to follow up on that. That what's already happening with regard to workforce development is playing very well in the creation of a cluster. But as, as Ed points out, things need to be brought to scale. And, and I think you'll see uh, out of the mayor's office working in conjunction with ACC and with others, a real push with a focus. And one of the things that jumps out of me, I'm, I'm glad I got to be here today because I hear all this, is it, it focuses on career more than jobs and they're, they're, they're good jobs but when you hear about uh, upskilling and that sort of thing we're talking career paths and that's another unique part of, of, of how I think this cluster is starting to work so uh, thanks for being here thanks for shining a light on this thanks for the uh, chip and work on, on all that because I think it will make a big difference and I think Austin, Texas will be a target for yeah. Listen, I'm so impressed. By the way, to your point on careers, on the plane down here, uh, some guy recognized me and said, thank you for your work on chips, which is unusual, right? <laughs> uh, I said, I can't believe you know about that. And he said, my dad worked at TSMC, which is a big chip company for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I said, was he an engineer? He said, no, yeah. he was from Massachusetts. He said he was from Brockton, Massachusetts, like working class community. He uh, graduated high school. He was working someplace, I think he said in construction, you know, like you go to the bank. And his buddy said, hey, there's this new company opening up and they're looking for people in a fab. His father said, what's a fab? His buddy said, I don't know, let's check it out. So they went, 40 years, the guy's retired now. Started, I don't know, probably a line worker in one of their fabs. Stayed there for 40 years, a whole career. 
And I think that in manufacturing, particularly in advanced manufacturing, there is that opportunity. You know, these companies, I'm sure you see it in your companies, or you know, even the little smaller companies, if you get someone, they'll just keep putting you up the ladder. And it is a career. And in some cases, what I love about this place or the high school things, it's without the college debt. You know, uh, it's a great thing to be able to get a job without the college debt or to, to go and then go back to college. So anyway, I'm very impressed. It's good in the cave to see yeah. it myself, <laughs> by the way. Uh, I was in San Antonio earlier. I had another thing I'm working on is getting the internet to every American, broadband mm -hmm. connectivity. And I said, you know, while I'm down there, let me go. I know about Samsung here. I said, let me go check out what's going on um, down there. Because like I said, we're building clusters. And I just, I'm so impressed with what I've seen here. Like everything I've heard is exactly the way to do it. So if I, my, if my oh, let me say this, let me give you the lay down. So yesterday we put the application out for the big manufacturing companies. Like I said, in about May, later in the spring, we'll put the money out for the supply chain companies, uh, which is tooling and all the suppliers. And then later in the year, we'll be putting the money out for research and development. So in addition to the money um, for companies to get them to expand in America, we're launching something called the NSTC, National Semiconductor Technology Center. It's not actually one center, it'll be a few places around the country where we're going to fund big public-private partnerships between research universities, companies, community colleges, all around uh, innovating. Mm -hmm. With a huge focus on bringing costs down. No, let's be honest, to keep this, if we can't, government can't give away $50 billion every year. But this industry has to innovate to bring costs down. We need to innovate to, to stay ahead of the curve. Uh, we need a lot more innovation in packaging. I was talking to somebody before about packaging. You know, as these chips get smaller and smaller, they can only get so small. Mm -hmm. So the way they are arranged in the packaging is even more important. So anyway, I'm putting that on your radar because I know we got somebody here from UT, and I know that's part of the cluster is the research and development. And if you really want to build out the whole cluster, it's, you know, I'm not joking, it's like kindergarten through PhDs. Uh, I, re I really mean that. You know, teaching kids, little kids. You know, they should know what a lathe is. Uh, they should know basic science, like what's a job in the semiconductor industry, all the way through this super innovative technology around packaging. And there'll be a few places in America, geographies, where we build this out at mega scale. And um, I sense that you're competitive and collaborative. <laughs> so, like, game on with the rest of America. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to the board for being here. Thank you so much for all your time.